Hello, I'm Christine Batty, a nurse practitioner, board certified in advanced diabetes management, and a certified diabetes care and education specialist. I'm also a person living with type 1 diabetes for over 40 years. My dual perspective allows me to bridge the gap between clinical expertise and real world experience. As a provider, I understand the science behind diabetes management. But as someone who wears the tech, I know the daily challenges firsthand. Join me as we explore cutting edge technologies and practical tips that can help you better assist your patients living with diabetes. Continuous glucose monitoring is a phenomenal tool in the treatment of diabetes. Before the existence of CGM, pricking fingers and using glucose monitors to look at glucose in a moment in time was the standard of care. When I began using a CGM many years ago, I was concerned about the accuracy of the results. After seeing a blood glucose over 300 after my breakfast, I was convinced that the CGM value was wrong. I had never seen that problem. So I used my trusty glucose meter and the results were not the same. I began having trouble with hypoglycemia while sleeping. The low alarm would go off in the middle of the night. I was not having symptoms, so I used my meter to test. My blood glucose was not low at all. So now I'm frustrated. What is going on? One of the reasons I was excited about using the CGM was no more finger sticks. Well, now I was doing finger sticks to double check the CGM results. I was confused and frankly, a bit annoyed. In fact, I considered not using the CGM. So let's talk about why this is happening. First, let's discuss accuracy. People with diabetes using a CGM need to know that there is a variance between CGM glucose value and the glucose meter or finger stick value. CGMs have been deemed an accurate and reliable way to monitor glucose levels. But CGMs will have a variance of about 15% between meter glucose and the sensor value. A person might say, my blood glucose is 180 and my meter is showing 153. This might be interpreted as inaccuracy, when in fact that is very accurate. There should not be an expectation that the glucose meter reading and the sensor reading will be the exact number. It will not be 153 and 153, for example. When initiating CGM use, this information needs to be reviewed in detail. Another component of accuracy is related to hypoglycemia. CGMs are often initiated due to problematic hypoglycemia. CGM is a huge safety net in this setting. CGM devices will alarm when hypoglycemia is impending or occurring. And research demonstrates that the incidence of hypoglycemia is significantly reduced for people on CGM devices. However, there can be a challenge. It's called compression hypoglycemia. You may have never heard of this as a provider or a person with diabetes. Compression hypoglycemia occurs when there is pressure against the sensor pushing it deeper into the tissue. The interstitial fluid, the fluid that the glucose is measured from under the skin, is displaced away from the sensor, causing a false low glucose value. For example, I wear my CGM on my abdomen and I sleep on my stomach. As a result, sometimes my CGM will alert me in the middle of the night saying I'm low. As somebody who is prescribing these devices, you need to ask, where do you think you want to wear this? What is your lifestyle like? How do you sleep? People using some newer CGM devices are less apt to have compression hypoglycemia issues, but it is definitely something to keep in mind. Now let's focus on no finger sticks required. This statement is not true. For the most part, there is an absence of finger sticks when using a CGM device. But there are times that finger sticks are required. For example, the sensor is reading a glucose of 400. The person with diabetes may think, no, I just think that that's not what it is. I just took my insulin, I did not overeat. If there is a suspicion that the sensor value is incorrect, 
then a finger stick with a glucose meter is required. You need to troubleshoot the problem. Is it possible that there is a problem with the device or that it needs to be replaced? Could it have been damaged or has it dislodged itself? Communication between the person with diabetes and the provider can get to the bottom of issues related to the CGM. As you can see, a glucose meter is an important tool to have when using a CGM. Be sure prescriptions for testing supplies are up to date and the strips are not expired. Three takeaways. Number one, CGM devices are very accurate, but they do have a percentage of variance between CGM results and the blood glucose finger stick results, and that's appropriate. Number two, Finger sticks are sometimes required, especially if the CGM result does not correlate to symptoms or circumstances. Number three, it is very important to have regular testing supplies available at all times. For more on this topic or other diabetes technology topics, please visit danatech.org from ADCES.